Hello and welcome to Catch More Media. In tonight's show, we bring you all the action from the third round of the Tunnel Barn Farm Winter Championship. After round two, just two anglers had a perfect two point score. But with all competitors able to drop their worst result and the payout extending down to 8th place on the league overall, there was hunger in the chasing pack as the anglers headed into the draw queue. The snow and ice that had blighted round 2 was long gone, but in its wake came warmer weather and lots and lots of rain, making for very damp conditions for our 70 competitors. Commercial fishing legend Andy Bennett got off to a great start from peg 27 on high pool, taking several good F1s in the early stages of the match on maggot tactics. Standing in for Des ship, Sean Little was also finding a few fish from peg 21 on the high pool. Also off to a great start was Jamie Hughes on peg 21 on house pool. Jamie was enjoying a good run of F1s on dobbing tactics with a small piece of bread on the hook. Jordan Holloway was also finding plenty of early fish, catching some good sized F1s on maggot tactics. With both Conor Barlow and Luke Bamford, our two anglers on a perfect score going into this match, drawn in the same section, it was always going to be a humdinger of a battle. And from what we could see in the early stages, it was Conor who was edging it. Sponsoring this third round of our Tunnel Barn Winter Championship is Cresta. And the day before this match, we caught up with Stuart Lister, who was enjoying a cheeky practice session on the house pool. Well this is great, it's my first visit to Tunnel Barn, I can't believe it. I read and hear so much about people coming here, it's the first time I've ever managed to get here. Fantastic place, well kept, there's loads of rain and, and what impresses me, there's hardly any, any mud. Uh, everywhere I've been for the last month, I've been in quagmires and this is a, a lovely well kept fishery. Having a little practice for the um, Catchmore Media League tomorrow, um, having a little go on house pool. Trying to catch a few on the feeder, catching out, uh, slinging out into a, a nice gap out between two islands. Got a couple of F1s, which is nice to see uh, see the tip go around. What I'd, what I'd like to um, show you is, is a couple of the accessories that we've got that that helps. I'm really impressed with some of these things that Cresta have brought out. We've got a great products and development team, and very very innovative. You know, they're um, designing some of their own products, uh, not copying things, designing their own products. And one of the things I want to talk about today is the, uh, is the new push bead. The Cresta push bead system is, a, is the perfect method for attaching hook lengths to all kinds of inline method feeders. The easiest way to attach them is to put the line straight through the stem of, of the inline feeder. Then once that's done, you see that the push bead is in two pieces. Take them apart and you'll see that one of them is uh, a sort of rounded end and it's generally the same colour as most uh, stems on the feeders. Put your line through that. The next part is black, it's a small piece of black and the, at the end of it there's a little hole, uh, it's, it's a central hole through the, through the connector. Push your line, your main line, through that hole and when it protrudes at the other end tie a small overhand loop. That loop then attaches to the bottom of that uh, black piece of plastic and they both, you'll find there's a hook on there that you can slip your hook length onto. I'd like to introduce you to the Cresta PTFE internal bushes. Absolutely fantastic if you're like me and you like all your top kits to be the same length. You, you, you know what it's like, you're fishing for, for carp and whatever and you've got a heavy elastic in and then you want to go fishing for the silverfish and you want to put a lighter elastic in. The problem is you do that and the, and, and the elastic retreats straight into your pole. Using these you can actually reduce the bore system on, 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 the, on, on your pole tip so that you can use lighter elastic and a smaller connector. Absolutely perfect. Not all items of tackle need to be revolutionary, but there's one, one piece that, uh, that's, that Cresta have developed uh, from an old time favourite, and that is the, the Cresta split shot uh, pliers. 
it's a, it's absolute must really for a, a pole angler to, uh, to use. Much better on on your line. It protects your line when you're putting the shot on. Much better for yourself. You don't get you're not ingesting lead by putting it in your mouth and uh, and, and crunching it with your teeth. These work absolutely perfect with any all forms of round shot, whether it's hard or it's a soft shot. They work well with stots and uh, and styles. Absolutely invaluable piece of equipment. I can't do without them. I thought you couldn't teach an old dog new tricks, but with these, it's really helped my fishing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed having a look through the preview of some of the uh, accessories that Cresta use. If you need any more information, please have a look at www.fishcresta.eu. You'll see all the products that Cresta do, uh, a, a lovely range of tackle. With a match win and a section win already under his belt in this series, it's easy to see why Adam Rumble has been the first choice standing of most people who've had to miss a round. And this week, it was time for him to stand in for Mark Taylor. Drawn on peg 43 on the high pool, Adam was putting a great run of fish together, feeding maggots via kinder pot at the bottom of the far bank ledge. Next to Adam, Andy Moores was also putting in a quality performance. It was close to call who was taking the lead. Of all the pools, Extension looked to be fishing the hardest, but there was still plenty of fish coming out in areas. On peg six on house pool, Chris Cameron found some great form late on in the match, taking some real quality F1s and a big carp on the long pole. But would it be enough to unsettle the early leaders on the high pool? Fourth place uh, with a weight of 61 pound 7, picking 120 quid, Andy Bailey. Third place with a weight of 72 pound 8 from High Pool, peg 45, picking 170 quid, Andy Moore. Second place from High Pool, peg 43, with a weight of 84 14. Picking up 220 quid, Adam Rumble. Well and now the big one. Um, picking up a thousand quid for the weight of 89 pounds 14 from High Pool Peg 27, Andy Bennett. <laughs> dead simple match really I've got a little island there at 16 meters and there's a little plateau that comes off it so it's about three foot and then I've got about seven foot in the middle so I've picked three swims one to the island one down to my left hand pallet at 16 meters and then one at seven meters in the deep water and basically I've just had a dead simple match I've had a bite of truck for four and a half hours fishing across to the island I've just moved probably two yards at a time three times during the day just following the fish around the island um, and I've had 54 F1s with 10 stockies uh, and I finished off last half an hour with seven down the middle so lovely day. The concept of the league is brilliant, you know, Tom does a really good job, good money, brings all the best anglers in the country from everywhere, you know, there's not many matches that inspire you during the winter so things like this, even the Masters in the summer, for me, they're the best competitions now as regards to leagues and stuff. The league itself, I think Connors is in pole position now, he's got the three wins in the bank, but with anglers like Jamie Hughes chasing him, you know, there's a few others with two wins, I think Luke Bamford might have two wins, um, he's not done so well today I don't think, but that can happen in winter, you can draw a bad peg. If, if it was me to pick a winner, you've got to go with Connor just because he's got the three wins in the bank. As you'll be able to see from this league table, it's very, very tight at the top. Join us on the 19th of February for all the coverage of the final round of this year's Tunnel Barn Farm Winter Championship. And we'll be able to reveal who has been crowned champion and walked away with a cheque for £5,000. <laughs>